Hi, this is a video to help you through the activity on condensation, hydrolysis, and glycosidic bonds. First, let's talk about what a condensation reaction looks like. A condensation reaction takes two molecules and removes a water to make a new bond between the two molecules. Here's a cartoon version of what happens. Basically, you have a molecule with a hydrogen that can leave, and you have a molecule with an OH group that can leave. The OH group and the hydrogen will re remove themselves and leave as water, and there will be a new bond that forms between the original two mo molecules. This is a condensation reaction. The word condensation means that you are forming water or removing water from the molecules. This is the example that you have in your activity. Two monosaccharides can undergo a condensation reaction. In this case, we're going to remove the alcohol on the anomeric carbon of one of the sugars, and we're going to remove a hydrogen from the alcohol on one of the alcohol groups on the other sugar. This is what it looks like. You form a new bond between this oxygen and this anomeric carbon. It looks like that. And I've made this bond red because it's important. This is called the glycosidic bond. The glycosidic bond links two sugar monomers together between the anomeric carbon of one of the monomers and the oxygen of one of the uh, previous alcohol groups of the other sugar. The important part of the glycosidic bond is to notice that it is connected from the anomeric carbon of one sugar to the oxygen of another sugar. Notice that water is produced in this reaction and the water came from the alcohol that used to be on the anomeric carbon and a hydrogen from the second sugar. I'd like to point out here that in the starting materials or the reactants here, the anomeric carbon that reacted was the alpha anomer. In the product, this is still an alpha anomeric carbon. I can tell this because even though this bond is kind of pointing over to the side, it's still lower or down with respect to the hydrogen that's also attached. So this carbon is in the alpha form here, but it's also in the alpha form here. The anomeric carbon of the other sugar has not reacted at all, and so nothing has changed there. And this alcohol that it was down in the reactants is still down in the products because its hydrogen is shown up. We'll talk about condensation reactions in this activity in the context of taking two monosaccharides or individual sugars and making di or polysaccharides, which are polymers of sugar molecules. The forward reaction as drawn here is a condensation reaction. We'll also learn about the reverse, which is called hydrolysis. Hydrolysis literally means cutting with water. Hydro is water and lysis means to cut. So in a hydrolysis reaction, you take a water molecule and you cut a bond between two other things. This is the cartoon to show you what's happening. The OH group of the water will go to one of these molecules and the hydrogen will go to the other molecule like this. The connection between the two units will be severed or lysed. This is a hydrolysis reaction and it is the opposite of a condensation. Let's look at the hydrolysis of a disaccharide. When you hydrolyze a disaccharide, you cut the, the glycosidic bond. So the bond that you form during a condensation reaction is the same bond that you cut during a hydrolysis. When we add water and cut this bond, the OH group of the water will go to the anomeric carbon and the hydrogen of the water will go to the oxygen. It looks like this. The OH group from water is now attached at the anomeric carbon and this oxygen is now attached to the hydrogen that used to be on the water. The connection between the two units is severed and this is going from a disaccharide to two monosaccharides. We will be talking about hydrolysis and condensation today in the context of sugars, but later in the semester we will apply these reactions to many different situations. 
please make sure you understand hydrolysis and condensation in the context of sugars, but also in a more general sense. In fact, you will see this next week in lab in the synthesis of aspirin. Before I change the slide, I'd like to point out that the anomeric carbon of this glycosidic bond is in the alpha position. So this is an alpha anomer. This, this sugar molecule is an alpha anomer. And I can tell that because the hydrogen is up and that means that this group is down. When I do the hydrolysis, I still write the alpha anomer of the monosaccharide. Now let's learn to name disaccharides. Disaccharides are named using numbers and symbols with respect to the glycosidic linkage here. So this whole thing is the glycosidic linkage, and this bond that I uh, highlighted in orange is specifically the glycosidic bond. When you're going to name a sugar, um, you, you need to know the root name, but we're also gonna add something in the front here to tell something about this glycosidic bond. So this is D-malose. It's a disaccharide of two D-glucose molecules but we need to tell how the 2D glucose molecules are linked. To do this, first, find the anomeric carbons. Here's one, and here's one. They are the carbons that have two bonds to oxygen. Notice that this anomeric carbon has two bonds to oxygen, and this anomeric carbon has two bonds to oxygen. Those are the only two anomeric carbons in this molecule, and there should be one anomeric carbon per monosaccharide. The second thing is to identify the glycosidic linkage. So here's the glycosidic linkage, and we're gonna locate that glycosidic bond. The glycosidic bond is part of the glycosidic linkage, and it's the bond between the anomeric carbon and the oxygen of that glycosidic linkage. Then you wanna find the number of the anomeric carbon. Now, when we were numbering these um, before to draw the Haworth projections, we would call this carbon number one. And we're still gonna call it carbon number one. That's the anomeric carbon, or carbon number one. And you need to find whether it's alpha or beta. In this case, it is alpha. I can tell because the hydrogen is up and the uh, oxygen group is pointing down. The last thing you want to do is find the number of the other carbon that's part of the glycosidic linkage, this carbon. So notice that this carbon is involved in the link between the two monosaccharides. I would number this carbon number four. In this monosaccharide, this is carbon one, two, three, and four. So I'll call that carbon four. The important parts of the name are to tell the number and anomer of the anomeric carbon involved in the glycosidic linkage and the uh, other carbon of the attachment. So I would write the name as the anomeric carbon anomer, so that would be alpha or beta, the number of the anomeric carbon, and arrow to tell me where that anomeric carbon is attached to the other monosaccharide. In this case, it would be carbon four. So I would write alpha one for the anomeric carbon and its anomer, an arrow to tell me that it's connected to four, and then I write the rest of the name. This is the part of the name that you need to know how to, to do using a structure like this. You can memorize that D-malose is D-glucose plus D-glucose. I don't expect you to recognize the glucoses based on the structure, but if I told you that this was two D-glucoses, I want you to know that that is a D-malose. And then you could be you could uh, tell me the linkage using this type of nomenclature. Let's try another one. First thing to do is to locate the anomeric carbons. Here's one, and here's the other. Notice that this molecule is different than the other disaccharide in that both of the anomeric carbons are part of the glycosidic linkage. Now I wanna number my anomeric carbons and determine whether they are alpha or beta. In the first case, this is number one, and the hydrogen is up, so it is alpha. This anomeric carbon is carbon number two. Watch out, in five-membered rings, you still start from the end of the chain in numbering. So this is carbon one, this is carbon two. Three, four, five, and six. Always start from the end of the carbon chain 
even if it's in a ring, when numbering sugars. So this is two, and since the carbon here is uh, down, or in other words, the O is up, it's a beta anamer. Then you simply write the name. In this case, because both of the anameric carbons are in, involved in the glycosidic linkage, I put both alpha and beta in the name. I put the one th that has the lower number first and the one that has the higher number, in this case two, second. So I would call this alpha, beta, one to two, D sucrose. I'd like you to learn that D sucrose looks something like this, and it is a disaccharide of D glucose and D fructose. Let's try one more. This is D lactose. It is a disaccharide of D galactose and D glucose. Let's name the glycosidic linkage of this disaccharide. First, find the anameric carbons. Notice that the only anameric carbon that's relevant in this case is this one, because this is part of the glycosidic linkage. So at this point, you can ignore the second anameric carbon. Now I would number the anameric carbon and the other carbon that's part of the link. Here, this is carbon one, and it is beta because a hydrogen is down and the O is up. And this one is carbon four. So I would name this one beta one connected to four. I'd like you to know the names of these disaccharides and their monosaccharide units. I don't need you to recognize the structure. If I tell you that the components are made of these things, I expect you to know the name for the disaccharide and vice versa. If I asked you what the, the monosaccharides were that make up D-lactose, I want you to know that it's D-galactose and D-glucose. I'll hold you responsible only for these three disaccharides. Thanks for watching this video on condensation and hydrolysis of monosaccharides and disaccharides and glycosidic bonds. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to vote so I know.